don't tell anyone, I'm in the kitchen with maggots. <laughs> yeah, don't tell my wife. She doesn't watch my videos anyway, so she, she'd be none the wiser after this. But there we have some nice live maggots. I'm going to show you how I prepare dead maggots. Now, I get asked all the time how I prepare them, so I'm finally going to do a little video and just show you how I prepare dead maggots. And as a bonus, dead pinkies as well. Perfect for this time of year, catching skimmers and, um, and cold water commercial fish. Dead maggots, dead pinkies are brilliant. But I use dead maggots, a fantastic margin fishing bait in the summer in larger quantities, and sometimes just a little batch for fishing on a method feeder. I do a lot of dead maggot fishing on the method feeder as well. So anyway, here's how I prepare my maggots from live to dead. Um, there's loads of different ways of doing them, but I really, really swear by this method. Um, the easiest way is just chuck them in a freezer. Bag them up, chuck them in a freezer for at least four days. Three days they can still come round when you defrost them. But I personally don't like them like that and a large quantity is no problem. Any leftover maggots, if I have a large amount of maggots left over, I'll whack them in the freezer and then I can feed them on a commercial. Some venues they are feeding four or five pints of dead maggots. So um, so that's part fine for there when they're when they're just lapping them up like pigs with fins really. So, um, but when they're a bit more discerning and I want a real nice quality um, dead maggot, especially this time of year, if I want a, a dead maggot for a method feeder hook bait, then this is how I prepare my dead maggots. Now, first things first is riddle them. Now they're gonna be killed anyway, but I still like to have decent quality maggots. I don't want any rubbish in there, any skins or casters or anything like that. These are pretty good anyway, so they'll go through that riddle really, really quick. I've also got a pinky riddle there. So let's, let's riddle those pinkies off as well. And uh, you don't have to be that, that fussy, but I like to have nice clean maggots and no skins and horrible bits and bobs in there. Um, so we'll, they'll, they'll go through in no time. And uh, we'll come back, see all these little manky bits and that. I don't want them in there. So uh, I just want a nice, decent maggot. So uh, we'll wait for those to riddle through and then I'll come back to you in a second. Well, there we are, as you can see, 99% have gone through, but there is a few little bits and bobs left behind and I don't want to feed those. They're, they're black, horrible. They might taste worse. I don't know. I just don't want them in my, uh, in my, in my mix. So uh, I'll just tuck them off. Make sure none can actually go on the kitchen floor. Don't worry, I'll give the, the kitchen a, a deep clean after this. So they're all through. And those pinkies. Not too much. I've riddled these already anyway, so I knew there wouldn't be too much bad in there. He's going to get a nice big one that's stuck. There's nothing wrong with those. They're just too big for my riddle. So uh, these are old census riddles, by the way. I've had them years. So uh, uh, maggot, maggot mesh and a pinky mesh. So, uh, so there's all that muck. Not a lot, really. Didn't expect a lot, but some days you get a load of stuff in there. Now then, then I will riddle them again now, but not to get rid of the skins. I want to get rid of all the the bran and the maize and all of that. Um, I just don't want it clogging up and getting all mucky and everything, and it's all a bit stinky and stuff and stuff. So I just want nice, clean maggots without any maize or bran or sawdust or anything in them. So next job. I can actually use a pinky riddle to do my maggots with, because then I know the maggots aren't going to go through. Quick shake, get all that out. And if you're quick, there you are. I'm not getting every last bit out, but uh, as much as I possibly can. So there we are. We've got nice clean maggots then for killing, and that's all the all the maize and and stuff that was left over. So uh, take that away again. There we are. And I'll do the same with pinkies. Got to be a bit faster with pinkies. There we are. All that. So I don't want any maize or bran in there. So there we are. Nice clean maggots. Nice clean pinkies. Now I'm not going to kill all those maggots. For a commercial, this time of year, if I'm fishing a method feeder, I might just kill that amount. If I'm feeding them for skimmers and quality F1s and carp and that, little balls of grommet and stuff, quarter to a half a point is ample. So uh, you can always do more. They last instantly. When I have killed them, they'll last a week. So, uh, so, but I'm not going to do them all. 
just a few. There's probably too many there. There they are. That's all I'm going to kill because I know that's ample for my next session. And the same with uh, with pinkies. I'm running out of tubs now. Uh, I'll go in there. And then a small amount of pinkies there. So there we are, that's how much maggots and pinkies we're going to kill. Incidentally, I'd normally do them in the morning, as long as I've got time. Or I'll do it the night before, and then just leave them in the fridge once they're done. But anyway, perfectly fresh, nicely cooled maggots is what we're after. Let's get back up to the worktop. Water in the kettle. Whack it on. And forget about that for a second. There we are, kettle's boiled. So I'll pour myself a cuppa whilst I'm at it. Follow your dreams, that cup says. I dream of showing people how to kill dead maggots. Right then, water straight out of the kettle. Do not pour that straight onto your maggots. That will scold them, it'll turn them white, turn them hard. They'll be absolutely ruined. What I do, hot water from the tap. So run the hot tap, you want it really hot. So I won't start filling my, my maggot tub until that's really hot, uh, it's hottest. And our hot tap is very hot. Plumber will probably say it's too hot. <laughs> but uh, it's getting hotter now. It's nice and hot now. All right, that's its hottest. Let's just pour some water in. There we are. Perfect. We might as well do the pinkies as well whilst we're at it. Sometimes that's hot enough in itself to kill them, but I try and take them a stage further. Got a bit of a drippy tap there. So, uh, so anyway, so that's nice and hot in there, nice and hot in both of those tubs. But all I'm going to do now is just slowly pour in a bit of water from the kettle into each. Now, don't put your fingers in there unless you're confident. <laughs> just use a little spoon or anything. So, because uh, obviously you've just poured boiling water in. So. Uh, this is my maggot stirring spoon. This isn't going to go back in the uh, in the kitchen, honest. So uh, there we are. I want it so it's it's like really hot, but not scalding hot. So tiny amounts. Give it a stir. Give it a stir. So it's just bearable to put your fingers in. There we are. Oh yeah, that's it. Nice and hot. And that's it. Just leave them now. You'll get an odd floater. But you, you generally find if you just leave it five, 10 minutes, they'll have all sunk, or 90% of them will have sunk. And that's it. That's how I kill my maggots. I know that they've still retained their color and I want them to be flaccid. I don't want to be white and stiff, which is what scalding does if you pour boiling water straight onto them. But by slowly adding boiled water to hot water, you get a lovely flaccid, floppy maggot. Now a maggot, a live maggot is, is sort of like that, nice and sort of uh, stout. I want it to be a bit uh, like that. That's how I want my dead maggots. That's the best way I can describe it. I don't want them to look like a maggot or, you know, almost like a caster shape. I want to be like relaxed and all floppy. And uh, I find I get nice floppy maggots like that. So uh, they're dead. I'll show you those close up. But they are dead. But to make sure they don't come round, just leave them in the water for... 10 minutes that's it that's that's it you could leave them overnight i would happily leave them in the in a cold garage overnight like that um but that's that's it that's that's as good as it takes and they are perfect dead maggots nice limp still retaining their color perfect for fishing with and the same with pinkies oh it's a little bit hot that one <laughs> and that's it as far as storing them goes a nice i like these little thin bags and um, and I will just, these are definitely killed. So imagine these have been done for 10 minutes now. So I've got another tub with a sieve. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. Another tub with a sieve. And all I do is quickly sieve them off like that. I just let them to drain. And then I just whack them in a little, I like these little thin blue bags for, for my pinkies. There is a reason. One, this sieve goes in lovely. So I can just 
happen. Again, this is my maggot sieve. <laughs> it's not a kitchen sieve. <laughs> it stays in the garage. So there they are, they'll stay like that. I'll just roll them up like that. But I quite like, most people see my, my Tupperware and I like a little white, a little, um, I like these little clear tubs, nice and small and compact. So it, generally I just pop them in there and quite often I'll just leave them like that so I can dip it, dip my hands in. And if any, if I don't need them uh, after the session, it's so easy to just go like that. I haven't even took them out of the bag. So that's how I often store my maggots. If I've got any sort of volume, I'll just um, put them in, in the tub and cover them with water. But always keep them wet, keep them moist. You must keep them under water. One, if any do decide to go round, to come round, they won't because they're, they're covered in water. But it also stops them drying out and floating and all sorts. But anyway, so that's how I'll keep my dead maggots and dead pinkies, just like that. And we'll drain these as well. I'm sure they're not gonna come round, but it's just to make doubly sure. I just habitually leave them in for, for 10 minutes. That's more than enough for a winter skimmer session or a method feeder session or even a, a commercial carp session where at this time of year in winter we're not feeding a lot of bait. But look, you can see every single one of them looks brilliant. There's nothing wrong with those at all. Lovely flaccid maggots. I don't want them to look like a live maggot. I want them to look limp and flaccid as if they've been on the bottom a long time. But they're so soft. They sink slower as well. They waft around real lovely. I catch no end of fish on dead maggots and that's how I've always prepared them. So there you are anyway. Dead maggots. <laughs> um, prepared my way. Very, very simple. I know I've took a long time explaining it, but it, takes, it just takes minutes to sort. And I know that they are perfect for any sort of fishing I want to do with dead maggots. So there we are. I'm going to pop them in a bag, hide all the evidence, Give the, connect, give the kitchen a deep clean and no one's any the wiser. <laughs> Don't tell my wife I've done this video.